Hi, my name is Sean Williams, and thank you for joining me once again in a, our conversations on political science, politics, and particularly in this video in our examination of political ideology, and particularly trying to understand how identity helps to understand political ideology. Now, in this particular lecture, our second in a series, we're going to be talking about some new concepts. Whereas in the first video, we were looking at identity and order, structure, left versus right. In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion with structure, but we're going to add some new terms like institutions or institutional relationships. We're going to talk a little bit about relationship with authority and then discuss some classical uh, terms for defining ideology like liberal versus conservative, libertarianism, and also progressivism. So to start off with, uh, I, want to ask, I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions. First of all, think about what you feel the best way to establish and maintain the social order of your choices. Now, if you've watched the first video, think about this idea of social hierarchy. What do you think the best way of creating a hierarchy would be and how would you go about creating it? Also ask yourself this question. If you're building this social structure that's going to help to establish and maintain your ideology, your hierarchy, what elements of society do you think would be most important in establishing or, or maintaining that social order? Now, again, in this lecture, what we want to do is we want to think about how these questions of establishing or maintaining social order uh, can be dealt with through something called political institutions. Now, what exactly do we mean when we're talking about order or when we're talking about political institutions? Well, think about how most societies are structured. First of all, most societies are going to be structured around concepts of wealth or privilege. How much income do you have? How much land do you own? Wealth is usually a key structure in any society. Uh, and, and when we're thinking about how that society is going to be reinforced, we need to ask questions like how is wealth established or maintained? But in most societies, and this is true in, in European societies, American society, and even the Asian cultures, there are also three other groups that are of fundamental importance when trying to understand how that society is structured. In the United States, we talk about them as being the three S, family, flag, and faith. How important is your family structure? Where does your family stand in the social hierarchy uh, in the society in which you live? How important is nationality, the political system, adherence to the government, to law and order? And then also, what is your relationship to the religion that's dominant in your culture? Uh, how important is church or church attendance or the particular type of church that, we, you, that you would go to? Now, in the United States, when we're talking about these key institutions as they've appeared in our history, uh, we can think of them as being divided into political and social institutions. And in this class, uh, in classes in, 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 political, in uh, political science, we tend to be more concerned with the political institutions. Uh, we're talking about government or police, we're talking about the military, black, back the blue or back the green or pay your taxes. And it's probably also important when thinking about the scope of American history to consider the institutions that reinforced slavery up until the Civil War and then the institutions that reinforced segregation up until the 1960s. Now in social order, when we're thinking about the social institutions, uh, we can also talk about things like the churches that you belong to, both the local church that you belong to, but in the example of Catholics or Episcopalians or Methodists even, uh, the fact that these churches have a, a social cultural hierarchy that spreads across the state or the region. Think about family as an institution. There are also some key social groups that can be very important in certain local areas. And then again, the social norms and values that reinforced segregation or slavery, what we might call de facto segregation, a concept that uh, you will look at later if you get into a discussion about civil rights in America. Now, what this means is that uh, ultimately, when we're talking about political institutions, we're talking about sources of authority. We're talking about the formal power that is going to be used to maintain existing social order, to maintain the existing social structure, and to reinforce cultural norms and values in a society. Now, the result of this is that political institutions are going to have the effect of reinforcing basic beliefs 
but also reinforcing the inherent biases that might appear in any society, including the American political system. So just like our conversation on identity, uh, if you've watched the first video, when talking about institutions, there's both good and bad to having political institutions. Institutions are vital in that they help you to build certain shared principles, or they can help build trust. You understand how the political system is going to work because there are rules to the game. For that reason, you're able to manage risk. Institutions solve uh, the collective action problem or the prisoner's dilemma. But institutions also can have a bad side. They can be discriminatory or prejudicial. Uh, it's possible that political institutions can limit the ability of society to adapt if change is necessary, or they can form uh, barriers to social advancement if an individual who is born into a lower group or into less privilege wants to try to move up into a higher group of greater privilege. So when thinking about these political institutions and bringing us back to trying to describe political ideology, there's a couple of questions to consider. First of all, when you're thinking about yourself and your relationship to society, should you only be thought of, should you only think of yourself as a member of these other groups? Are you simply a member of your family? Are you nothing more than a churchgoer? Uh, are you nothing more than the identity that you belong to? Or perhaps, should you think of yourself as being an individual capable of making your own decisions? Also, think about what happens if a person wants to move up or down in social standing. What happens if you're born into the wrong family, or if you're born into the wrong church, or you want to practice a faith that isn't the dominant faith in your area? What should the role of political institutions be in this situation? Now, back in the 1600s, this is exactly the problem that a group of philosophers was trying to wrestle with. Uh, the first of these was a guy named Thomas Hobbes, and another one a little bit later, more important to the American political story, was John Locke and then several others from around the world. What they were wrestling with was the problem of how political and social institutions, particularly as they related to the monarchy, were reinforcing the social structures of the day. And they developed a new way of understanding the world, one that's based in individualism, we call it liberalism, or the argument that you as the individual are the ultimate building block of a political system. So when we're talking about the debate between conservatives and liberals, what we're really talking about is a debate between individuals who, who value the authority that comes from political or social institutions, people who think that it's wrong to take a knee during the Pledge of Allegiance, for example. <clears throat> or people who believe that we should show deference to sources of authority like the police or the military, or people who want to maintain strong senses of traditional family values on the one hand, versus liberals on the other, who, who believe instead that we should pay more attention to individual choices, individual preferences, and, and less choice to these strong authoritarian centers. Now, just with the left, as with the right-left continuum, the conservative-liberal continuum has a middle point. And in the middle point, they recognize the importance of institutions, but they tend to want to place social institutions like the church above political institutions like the state in the separation of church and state paradigm. Another couple of terms that we could think about on this particular scale are the authoritarian versus libertarian concepts. With authoritarianism, again, we're, we're considering that there, we have political ideologies that think there should be a strong centralized figure or a strong centralized force that's maintaining social norms or making decisions for society, as opposed to libertarians who want as little interference in the choices of individuals as possible. Now, one thing that I do want to mention, an additional term I want to talk about, is this term called progressivism. So what exactly does progressivism mean and how do progressives fit into this traditional conservative versus liberal paradigm? Well, historically, when we think about political institutions, when we think about government, the role of government was to reinforce social hierarchy. Its job was to maintain existing social norms and values. Uh, in a sense, we would say that conservative political authority and rightist hierarchy were uh, in congruence with one another. But in the modern era, especially in the United States, where we have a federal political system, that hasn't always been true. In fact, what we found is that frequently political institutions, especially on the national level, 
have been used by individuals who want to break down hierarchy rather than reinforcing hierarchy. Examples of this would be the civil rights movement in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, and also the women's rights movement at the turn of the 20th century, and then again, uh, more recently as well. In both of these situations, we think of these people as being progressives in the sense that they want to make change to take down or tear down hierarchy, but they want to use political institutions to do it. And this is a relatively recent sort of contemporary concept. So here are some questions to consider. Uh, as you're thinking about this conservative versus liberal paradigm, how do the policy debates that we're seeing right now demonstrate these concepts? How do they relate to the authoritarian or, or libertarian distinctions in America today? And again, also, uh, how does progressivism fit with this? So think through a couple of questions like freedom of speech or separation of church and state. Uh, what are your feelings about the right to keep and bear arms? And is that a right that belongs to the individual, maybe to protect themselves from the state? Or is that a right that belongs to the states as a way of establishing or, or maintaining militias? Uh, the rights of search and seizure in a state, your right to privacy, and then ultimately in the more modern sense, uh, LGBTQ rights, and whether or not the individual has the ability to make these kinds of gender-based decisions for themselves, or if they should adhere to traditional family norms and values. Now, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've learned something from it. Uh, check out the other videos in this series if you haven't already. And if you found those valuable as well, please be on the lookout for other topics uh, where we'll be discussing issues related to American politics and perhaps Texas politics as well. Thank you very much.